Let's uh, move on to the, to the SpaceX Crew Dragon. Um, so it has been undergoing a, a lot of tests as well. And uh, just to give you a, a feel for the scale, and I, I guess I should have had a person in here, but this is about uh, uh, 30 feet end to end, I think. And uh, this is the crew capsule. This is what's called the trunk that has all the uh, propulsion and life support and, and whatnot in it. And uh, uh, this launches on a SpaceX Falcon 9. So this is a, an artist's view of, of that. And uh, it also is intended to dock with the uh, International Space Station. So back in March of last year, they did their, they called it Demo Mission 1, but it's the equivalent of what Boeing was doing with their orbital flight test. And so they launched an on-crewed version of, uh, of Crew Dragon, and uh, the next day it indeed docked with the space station. It stayed for... Uh, uh, a little less than a, a week, and then it uh, re-entered, or separated from the ISS, re-entered, and uh, plopped down in, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, I'm sorry, the Pacific Ocean. Um, no, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, not all that far from, uh, uh, from Kennedy Space Center. And so that was a success, and then the next, uh, goal before flying a crew was to do what's called the in-flight abort test, where instead of doing this from just the launch pad, uh, SpaceX chose to actually launch the spacecraft, and at the point in the, the launch where it's undergoing the maximum amount of atmospheric uh, drag, or it's called uh, uh, Max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. It's, it's where you're uh, pushing through the thickest part of the atmosphere, you're going supersonic, and that's the, the maximum stress on the spacecraft. And so at that point is where they want to fire the launch abort uh, rockets to separate the spacecraft from the, the failing rocket. And so this is their uh, crew logo. And this is an artist's view of how that uh, would look. The, uh, um, the uh, abort rockets are part of the capsule itself. And they uh, produce something on order of uh, 500,000 pounds of thrust for about 10 seconds. And so it actually takes off at multiple hundreds of miles an hour in addition to already going at something like Mach 1.8 just because of being on the rocket itself. And so here was a, a view the night before launch. So uh, here we're on, uh, on launch pad 39A at, at Kennedy Space Center. This is one of the two shuttle launch pads that SpaceX has taken over this one to both launch uh, just rockets carrying uh, uh, satellites as well as having uh, uh, crews launch from here. And this is uh, the, uh, the walkway that the, uh, the astronauts will uh, walk down to get into the capsule when, when they first fly. And uh, so here is a view of, uh, of what that launch looked like. And it takes about 80 seconds after liftoff to get to the point where they, uh, they do the launch abort. It's Sunday, 19th of January, and we are awaiting SpaceX's launch escape test in just under 17 minutes and 8 seconds. So this was uh, 10 to days ago. the effectiveness of our launch escape system. Now we are currently go for launch from pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank Rapid cut. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 
Ignition, lift off, hit the fly, aim high, so it's our thing goes driving. Vehicle is touching down range. If you can see it, this is the speed in kilometers per hour. And then the altitude in kilometers. T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 with the Crew Dragon capsule is heading east from pad 39A. Everything looking good right now. As we get ready for max dynamic pressure, we are now throttling down the first stage engines on Falcon, Falcon 9. Power and telemetry nominal. Everything continues to look good. We're approaching the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is supersonic and passing through maximum dynamic pressure. You've heard we're supersonic, we're through max Q. We're getting ready now to throttle the engines back up. So this is looking stage. down at the trunk from the, 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 uh, There's the call out. Okay, crew dragon. The major activity coming up in just over 10 seconds. Shut down and dragon escape from the Falcon 9. Dragon launch escape initiated. So there's the crew dragon. Dragon away. And this is the first and second stage trailing behind. And they predicted that that would happen, that it would uh, uh, it would destroy itself. That may be Falcon 9 breaking up. We've got some and loud cheers on here. Again, this is looking uh, down at the. Uh, the next milestone the trunk. Is coming up at 2 minutes, 25 seconds. Um, we're expecting to see the trunk jettison. So that claw that connects the trunk to the capsule is going to separate, allowing Dragon to uh, separate from the trunk. That's coming up in 15 seconds. And we do have the report. Loss of telemetry from Falcon 9. First stage. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again. Some really loud cheers here in Hawthorne, California. This test is on the Dragon capsule. We expect that will happen when Dragon is at about 20,000 feet. So this is cutting forward to where the, the parachutes and uh, deploy. And this on the left is looking out the nose of the uh, spacecraft. There's there they are. the drogue the parachutes. And some major cheering going on here as every stage of this test unfolds. Now we're going to be getting ready for the main chutes to deploy. Now main chutes will be coming up fairly quickly. There are four main parachutes. These are the newest Mark III parachutes. They're each 116 feet in diameter. We deploy them about two kilometers above sea level, 6,500 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. We're getting good views from the Dragon and the airplane, showing the two drogue chutes. Now we're just waiting for the main parachutes to be deployed very shortly. And we have the view from a different camera on Dragon showing the four main parachutes. Now they are deployed in a reef condition. That means we're keeping them fairly shut to avoid shocks and now we're slowly opening up the four parachutes. Great views coming off of the Dragon camera on the left, and we can also see the four parachutes from the airplane on the right. That is a really cool view. Nice view of the orange and white parachutes as they're opening up into the second position, and they're going to fully open. From fully open, we'll be descending about 20 to 25 feet per second down to the Atlantic. So from that 6,500 foot altitude, it's going to take us a few minutes to splash down. And if you didn't also catch it, the diameter of these parachutes is 116 feet. So this is basically a football field across that you're looking at. Give them a little better angle to take the uh, slow bounce as we hit the ocean. Now, Marie, I talked about uh, the parachutes came out initially at a reef condition. That's fairly standard. They come out not fully open. That way they're minimizing the shock on the parachutes. We're also minimizing the shock on the capsule. Again, we want to give a smooth ride to the crew 
as they're coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, those four parachutes are actually going to be released from the capsule after splashdown, and they'll be recovered too. Okay, so there it's splashdown, and uh, you'll see a speedboat rushing off toward the capsule to uh, retrieve the astronauts. The recovery boat beginning to approach. Um, one thing, the plan for this is not like the old Apollo days where you'd see the capsule floating and a helicopter would hover overhead and lift them up in a basket. Um, the intent is they stabilize the spacecraft, put sort of a, a life preserver around it to make sure it stays upright, and then the, the tender ship comes up and as a crane, it lifts the capsule up, puts it on the deck of the ship, and then the crew uh, get out. So, somewhat different. So, this is a closer up view of, the, uh, of where the uh, uh, crew dragon separated from the, uh, the first and second stage of the Falcon 9. And then uh, this is just a nice uh, uh, higher resolution a uh, still image of that happening. So here's the plume from the rocket itself, and then this is the plume from the, uh, the abort engines. And then this is about uh, two seconds after they separated that uh, the spacecraft is, is climbing away very rapidly. And uh, th this I just had to throw in a, a view from the ground of the, uh, the first stage rapidly disassembling itself uh, because of the aerodynamic pressure. And that was fully expected. They, uh, they did not intend for, for that to survive. So uh, here's the, uh, the spacecraft after it was retrieved and, and on the ship. And uh, so the question is now, uh, they're going through all the data from the, the flight and uh, they have a few more tests to go through before NASA will approve launching a crew on board. And so the main thing is there's at least two more parachute tests that they have to go through. And the reason is last year they had a couple of failed tests on their parachutes. They've changed the design. Um, they've had, I believe this was the 13th straight successful test in a row. They want 15. And so uh, it's going to take probably another month or two to go through all the data from this flight to do the, the uh, subsequent parachute tests. And uh, when they get through that whole process, these two uh, NASA astronauts will be the first crew, uh, Bob Benkin on the left and uh, Doug Hurley on the right. So the, uh, the press conference they had after the landing of, of the abort test was that they think they should be able to have the crew launch uh, sometime in the second quarter of uh, this year. And so April, May, June. So we uh, will certainly be updating on that. Um, I neglected to mention on the Boeing test, um, they're still going through all the data from that, and NASA has to decide if they will accept the test that was flown, even though the, uh, the uh, guidance system was uh, in error. Um, they think they understand why, that somehow it picked up a, a time signal that was 11 hours offset from reality. And so it thought it was somewhere else in the, in the, uh, the mission. Um, but Boeing had committed to actually uh, uh, do the end-to-end -end test where they dock with the space station, stay there, and then, and then land. And so it's not clear at this point if NASA is going to say, you got to do it again, in which case that's going to take multiple months, or, uh, or let them proceed with, uh, with launching a crew. So there's a big uh, sort of a a fun race between Boeing and SpaceX. The first one to uh, 
get to the space station with a crew on board gets this flag that was taken up on the very last space shuttle mission in, uh, in 2011. And they get to bring it back, and so they win the, win the flag. Um, so we'll keep you updated.